What's going on there, YouTube and all my Forex fiends out there? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another video. Today's topic is one of my topics that I like covering the most. It's going to be support and resistance, the backbone of technical analysis. Um, a lot of you guys, I'm sure, are familiar with what support and resistance is. But in this video, I will not only go over what it is, but how to properly apply it to the charts and to our analysis in a way that is... Uh, advisable and that is the correct way to use it to complement our trading and really the only way to trade technically is through support resistance so I'm gonna go ahead and hop into it here guys um, really support and resistance is a concept that is simple yet overcomplicated overlooked um, it is really just the guidance that price follows in the markets when you see price moves up and then moves down and then moves up and then moves down and moves sideways. All these movements are going to be ranged between support and resistance. So a support is going to be a floor. A resistance is going to be a ceiling. It resists price and supports price, right? So when a resistance is broken, it then becomes a floor, which is support and vice versa. When a support is broken and then becomes a ceiling, which is resistance. So conceptually, it is uh, a moving location on charts using historical price data. So we use support resistance by looking left and seeing where price reacted in the past to determine where price is likely to react in the future. Everything in technical analysis is forward looking. We want to look on the back towards the past to see how it can help us in the future. And really, all we're going to be doing with support and resistance is the same thing, applying these levels into the future to try to identify key areas that price is going to react to it. Why we care about this is, like I said, everything in technical analysis and trading is based on speculation. We want to speculate where price is going to respond to levels. Technically, we mean price levels on a chart. So support and resistance is going to be the fundamentals of technical analysis, the core most important principle. Almost everything you use in technical analysis is based off the concept of price acting on these areas of support and resistance. They could be diagonally drawn with trend lines, they can be used on a tool with Fibonacci, they could be used on an indicator with pivot points. There's a number of different ways you can use support and resistance, but it is essentially the most important aspect of trading. It helps us identify all kinds of different parts of our trading, which is why we need it. And it's something that we really need to pay attention to. So real quickly, I'm going to hop into the charts in one second. I just want to go over these, take a screenshot of this, write it down, um, memorize this. This is what I use to identify these zones. These concepts I will dive into on the chart here, but make sure you guys have a visualization and written down what each of these is. Okay, I'm gonna go over it in the charts, but we've got price has respected the zone two plus times. So to create a support resistance zone, we need an area that has been respected by price two or more times. If it's a resistance, price is bounced to the downside off of it. If it's support, price is bounced to the upside off of it. Price makes strong moves away from a zone. So um, when we have a zone on the, on the chart that's identified, price makes a strong move when it hits it in the opposite direction. That shows us this is a strong level. Also, when price goes through the zone, it must make a strong move as well, but that's later on. Rejection wicks off the zone. So we see a lot of wicks with price fail to break the zone. Zone act as both support and resistance. Again, like I told you guys, these levels are going to act as both a support and a resistance. And 90% of the time, when price breaks one direction, eventually it will act as the opposite when it comes back to it. Um, zone is on a psychological whole number. I will go over that, but basically whole numbers are psychologically followed closer than regular um, impartial numbers. So this lining up with our horizontal support and resistance as we will be going over in this video is crucial and strong moves violating the zones another key level as i go over with you guys um, on the charts here so i'm gonna go ahead and flip into the charts and we'll go over it there further all right so now that we are on the chart this is where i'm going to show you guys how these characteristics <clears throat> excuse me there how these characteristics come to life and what we want to do so um just by looking at this my eyes can see Multiple levels of support and resistance here. Um, not sure if you guys have much experience with this or um, if you guys are brand new to this, but training the eye from doing it over and over and over will help you identify these levels um, for sure. So 
make sure you get your practice, make sure you get your chart time, and I'm gonna go over here some core principles that you can practice on how to apply these levels. All right, so as most of you know who follow my videos or analysis or anything know that I use TradingView, that is what I'm using just so you guys are aware to do this charting and um, taking out the tools here. So I have a very peculiar way that I do my technical analysis. Support and resistance, um, <clears throat> we wanna start from the higher time frames and go down. And I color code all my different time frame drawings, and I also use different tools. So I use a horizontal line that extends infinite in either direction for my weekly chart. And right off the bat, I can see this is a very strong weekly level. As you can see, it's acted as support, it's acted as resistance, right? We have multiple rejection wicks each time price comes near the zone. We have strong explosive moves away from the zone whenever price gets to it, right? So if you look at these moves, we've got strong move, strong move, strong move, strong move, strong move, right? Every single time prices come up to touch that, we've had a strong move. The level is clearly established because we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, at least touches to it. If we look left further, you can see price did react to it a bunch in here too. Now, um, one important concept to remember with these zones is that they are zones. It's not support and resistance point. It's not support and resistance exact level. It's not support and resistance precise line. It's support and resistance zone, right? So um, what you can do is throw a box around this zone so you know, okay, when price comes back up to this area, it's going to either A, be very tough to break through if you think it's going to continue in the direction above it, or B, it's going to bounce off hard once it gets to that level. Or, you know, that is what we can anticipate price to do, right? So what does this zone right here tell us? We've got multiple touches, two plus touches, point A is there. Price makes strong moves away, right? As we've seen with multiple examples here. So that's the second bullet point rejection wicks all along it. You can see that's very visible and obvious. Third point, both acted as support and resistance. That's the fourth one. Strong moves to violate the zone. So when price did break the zone here, boom, strong move through. We're yet to see it break back up above the resistance to now be support, but we can anticipate it's going to take a very strong move to do that. Why is that good for us? If we are a breakout trader and we want to enter a long when this level's broken, we know there's a very high chance when it is broken, it's going to make a strong move, aka big winner, right? Strong move means a big win or big loss unless you have stop loss placement and all that. Okay, so that is what we like about identifying these zones. It can tell us a story of different things. Okay, so real quickly, I'm going to show, I'm going to draw some more levels on here. Um, just just quickly, I'm not going to go crazy trying to identify these, but I can see in here, we've got a lot of times of price respecting this level, right? We've got it strong moves away, strong move to break, strong move to break, strong move to break. Pretty much every time though prices come to it, it's at least delayed a little. And this is on the weekly. So we want to be very conservative with how many we use in the weekly. And I'm going to put one more here on this psychological level, 1.040. So the psychological level, essentially what we want to do with that is... As we know, market participants are humans. Yes, there's a lot of algorithm and computer-based trading out there, but they are designed by humans to respond to things humans set. So humans are very psychological beings. And one thing humans do is react to things mentally. And full whole numbers in the markets are very strong confirmations of support and resistance. Often you'll hear different levels that are talked about. Um, Dow 20,000, Bitcoin, a number of different barriers that are all full psychological numbers. So these numbers are what we want to be trying to line these support and resistance with. Obviously, they're not always going to line up perfectly. This is probably right along the 1.13 level. So this really could be a psychological level. But again, it's not an exact point. All it is is additional confirmation of the strength of a zone. So we can make a, strong, a zone stronger if we identify it on a psychological level, okay? So we throw some levels here on the weekly chart. We drop it down to the daily chart. 
Now I switch it to a different color, to a different tool. I got my horizontal ray. And what I'm going to do now is identify some daily levels. I see one in here that's both been support, strong break, resistance. Okay. I see uh, really all through here is a zone. So as you can see, this is an exact point. But if we draw a zone, you can see multiple, 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 multiple touches, right? Okay, so again, with the daily, we want to be conservative as well. We want to keep our charts nice and clean and organized. And here we've got another level we could draw here, right? And I'll throw just one more down here along this level. So again, this isn't perfect, but you can see this psychological level all the way left has been respecting price and more recently it respected a lot. So we want to take recent price action into uh, account a lot when we draw these zones. Yes, a level that's been respected for months and if you look back is going to be um, significant. Okay, if it's a monthly support or resistance that's been held for decades, okay, that's important. But what price is doing presently and more recently is going to be very significant to us, right? So if this is a level that in the past was there, but not really respected that much, but in the future, I mean in the present, it has respected it a lot very precisely. That's a level we want to be watching now because we are trading now in the moment, okay? So um, then you can drop it down to the four hour. And this, a lot of this now gets into what you personally trade, what time frames you trade. When I drop it anything below the... Um, Daily, I'm going to be using just segmented lines like this. Um, if I want to identify four hour levels, like in here, you can tell price responded a lot to it, right? Yeah, I'm cutting through a lot here, but you can see price reacted a lot to it. And more recently, boom, strong sell off there. So if price continues higher, that could be a nice take profit target. Maybe if you're going long here or a number of different things we can use that for. But this is how I want you guys to draw your lines, right? And when I draw these levels, I'm not just drawing them randomly so taking it back to the daily for a second here i'm gonna go ahead and take these lines back off and what i'm going to do is since these are zones how i draw these levels is i'm going to try to pinpoint the zone in the middle as best i can now this is going to be in between um you know wicks candles None of that really matters in the drawing of these what matters is that the line goes through the most touches to it right so we'll use this one as an example because this is a good example so this is a zone right this is a whole zone it's acted as resistance strong break support 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 strong break resistance resistance and then price continue to move lower right so what this is showing us is that is an area that price is likely to react to in the future so yes, that box is helpful and you can do a box, but when I draw my lines just to make it cleaner and easier, I'm going to draw this line right in the middle. So it's touching as much stuff as possible. It's touching this wick. It's touching these bodies and wicks. It's touching this wick. It's just barely below this, but I, you can get the picture. It's touching this wick here. It's in the middle of this wick here, just barely above that wick. So you want to put it in an area where it's going to be right in the middle of the most points, the most touches possible, the most... Um, Again, this is the art side of trading. There's the scientific side and the artistic side. This is the artistic side. Where exactly and how exactly you plot this point is not as important as how you use the point and how you understand the concept of the point is a zone. It is a zone that price is likely to react to. So whether you're playing pullbacks and you want price to pull back to somewhere in that zone before you can go long or short, or you want to play breakouts, you want price to break that zone before you go long or short, that is where you have to get more in depth with your strategy and how you want to use the zones. And if you follow my course and you take my training, you will see more in depth how to identify these trading opportunities. However, plotting these zones and identifying these zones are hugely important. And then how you use them is also going to be. So this is how you properly zone them. No matter what <clears throat> time frames you trade on, even if you're a 15-minute scalper, I would at least identify the daily chart. But um, if you're a swing trader like I am, you trade the hourly, four-hour, daily type time frames. Weekly, daily, four hour is good to mark levels. And then I use the hourly to mark, um, you know, more short term levels. My stop and my stop and take profit I use on the hourly based off of the four hour. Um, I'll use these support and resistance lines to draw patterns on the hourly chart. Things like this, right? 
with this uh, bullish pennant pattern. So there is definitely uses for support and resistance on the smaller time frames, but the significant daily, weekly, four hour levels are really the ones that price is going to respond to that we wanna watch the most, okay? So that's showing us how to properly identify these zones with the characteristics. Now, taking us to after we've identified these levels, what tells us how strong these levels are? I went over some of the aspects and characteristics of identifying these levels, like how many touches, strong moves away, rejection wicks, support risk, all that. But here's going to be a quick breakdown of what they are. Again, screenshot this, write it down, take a picture of it, whatever you want to do. Remember these points. Time frame the zone is identified on. Again, I told you guys I start from the weekly and go down. Weekly is going to be the, the biggest zones, but the strongest. Um, and then I go down to my trading time frame. Length of time it is held for. Again, um, there's different versions of technical analysis. There's su supply and demand zones, which is a whole other video for a whole other time, which identify levels as um, you want to trade them. The second price comes back to it the first touch. So support and resistance is different. It's more so psychological barriers in the, in the uh, world of trading. So when you see something that's been holding for a long period of time, that can tell us, Yes, it's going to be strong and price is likely to bounce off of it and reverse. But more importantly, as technical analysts, we want to be trend traders. And what we want to identify is when price breaks this level that's held for a long time, it is likely to make a strong move afterwards. All the psychology, all the eyes watching, all the people marking it on their charts and seeing it in the banks and the uh, different psychological aspects these levels carry in the markets. Once it is broken, it's likely to trigger more people to want to jump into that trade and a stronger move away from that zone. So as technical analysts and as trend traders, which most technical analysts are and should be, that is what we want to use these zones for. If there is a, a trend, uh, a level is held for a long period of time, we want to expect a long move and sustained push through that zone when it's broken, okay? That's why we would like the length of time. How many times it's been respected goes hand in hand with length of time. Usually when something's been respected for a couple years, it has a lot of touches to the zone. So multiple touches to the zone make us understand that when price does break through it, it's gonna break through hard. Think of it as punching a, a sheetrock wall, right? Now, we're not gonna say just one punch through. We're gonna say like, let's say a younger kid's punching a sheetrock wall. The first couple punches, it's going to weaken the wall, weaken the wall, weaken the wall, weaken the wall. When that one punch finally breaks that little layer of wall that was left on that last punch, you're going to punch hard through that, right? So if you punched one punch through the straight wall, yeah, it would bust through pretty hard. But when you're punching that same force of punch and it breaks after a lot of punches when it's a very thin wall left and it shoots through the zone, think of that as that level that's held over time that finally breaks. It's thinned out enough over all those touches that it finally cracks and the floodgates open, the dam opens and price rushes through, all right? Um, how strong the rejected moves away from the, the zone are. So um, I'll hop onto the charts here in a second, but when I show you guys the, the stronger the move away from the zone, the more likely that zone is going to hold again the next time because again, it's just more psychological aspects mounting up. Whole number, again guys, if it is on a psychological level, level, it is going to be more confirmation of a stronger zone. So we want to line up these psychological numbers on the levels as often as possible. And again, how many wicks are on the zone? The more rejection wicks show, the more price tried to break through the levels and failed, which is a good indicator to us that in the future, people are going to identify this level. Maybe price tries pushing through and fails again, or maybe price does make it through and then you get that runoff because it finally broke through, right? So hopping back onto this chart here to identify again, let's do it on the weekly here. So it's cleaner to identify why I picked that zone, right? And again, I'm drawing it in the middle of the zone. Yes. Some of these candle bodies are cut off. Bodies are cut off. That's not some people are like, Oh, but you, it, the body broke and closed above it. That means it's definitely broken. That level's broken. No, this is just a line drawn here. This is a zone. So this level is an entire zone, not just that line. Right, so that candle breaking and closing there didn't break up above this and close. Now that, that's where this becomes subjective. People will say, well, to break this zone, then you gotta break these. Or to break this zone, you gotta break this candle body. Or a number of different things. That is where testing and trading and playing your strategy will show you how to um, build a strategy around these zones. But basically what we wanna do is identify these zones that are strong and price is likely to react to, right? So, um, going through the strength of what makes these zones strong, 
you can see we're on a weekly time frame. So this is going to be a strong level because it is respected on a weekly. Higher time frame, stronger analysis. Length of time. It's now um, April of 2018, but if you look left, it's been holding since July of 2013. Okay, so that's almost five years. That is a long period of time. That is telling us this is a very strong zone. Number of touches. Again, we already counted, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, really, eight, nine, ten, at least touches we can see here. When this baby breaks, it's going to break hard, right? Strength of move away. Again, we saw strong move, strong move, strong move, strong move, strong move. So strength of move away. Why identify this zone? There's strong moves. Number of wicks in the zone. Again, we've got multiple wicks. Wicks, 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 wicks. Wicks, 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 wick, right? So there's multiple wicks. We know that this for sure is a very strong trend, a very strong, uh, I mean, sorry, I'm not strong trend, a very strong level, right? This is something very strong we want to watch. And in a trend, this is something that we want to be aware of, whether it's, again, taking profits, setting entries, setting stops. There's a number of different things, but this is what we want to be looking for. So again, real quick, what the strengths and characteristics of identifying these zones do for us is help us identify key levels on the chart that price is likely to respond to. What this does is help us identify, for one, it helps us identify trend direction or existence, right? So if there is a trend, support and resistance levels can help us identify them. If we are breaking through resistances and setting supports were in an uptrend, right? So here we were breaking through supports and making them resistances. This is also market structure, but this is how we know we can use support and resistance to identify downtrends, right? Okay. So, um, looking at these levels, we can help identify if we're in a trend or in a sideways market. And although support and resistance can be very good to trade in sideways markets, we want to catch the trending moves, the stronger moves, and identify these markets that are in trends. The other thing we want to use this for support and resistance is our set as we go over in core effects. This is our stop loss, our entry, and our target. Essentially, what this does is it allows us to identify where to set our entry for trades where to set our target for trades, where to set our stop loss for trades. So support and resistance, if we enter um, pullbacks or breakouts as trend traders, if we enter a pullback, I'll just show you an example here. We could use this support and resistance level as price broke out, pulled back. Now it's we're expecting this to act as support. Boom, there's our entry trigger, right? This support that was resistance tells us where to enter, okay? Now let's say we were trading this um, bounce here, and let's say this was our entry, and we wanted to go long. Now we could use this support and resistance zone to set our stop loss below the uh, level. So let's just say we drew this zone to the bottom of the prior wick here that was in this level. Now we could use this zone to identify where we want our stop loss. Oh, we want our stop loss to be down here below the zone so that price has to invalidate our trade, which is what stop losses are all about. Check the stop loss video. We want to invalidate our trade with our stop loss. So if price comes down and breaks through this support, this support's invalidated, our trade's invalidated, on to the next, it's a losing trade, that's fine. We move on, right? We can also use it to identify targets. Let's say we were trading in this uptrend price pulled back here, we entered long, we set our stop below, we could set our target up here, anywheres in this, this zone. So you could be a very conservative person and set it right at the beginning of the zone because you think price is going to tap it and run away. Or you can be a more aggressive person and you can set it towards the top of the zone because you think price is going to make its way through the zone before it turns around. This is all personal preference. This is when having a trading strategy comes in. This is where you have to learn one, whether you join my course and you learn my strategies and my ways of developing a strategy or you develop one on your own. All this stuff is determined by your strategy.
I'm just trying to show you how to use these. So we want to use these levels to identify turning points in the market. And these turning points can help us identify when to enter trades, when to exit trades, where to place our stops, where to place our targets. It can also be a deterrent. If we're in a long, I mean, if we're looking for longs in an uptrend, but price is nearing a weekly resistance, okay, this resistance is going to tell me I don't want to be long right now. Wait for price to respect it, pull back, then maybe I go long with the target being back at the resistance. Something of this nature. So essentially, we want to be using these zones to identify key turning points in the market. And how we use those turning points depends on our strategy. But that is what we want to use these zones for. That's how we want to identify these zones. Make sure you mark them on different time frames with different color coding. Charting is nothing like it used to be back in the day. You don't have to write and draw charts out anymore. You don't have to print them out. You can just go on trading view, draw them out, plot your points, and it's beautiful. It's like a work of art. So if you guys have as much passion for this stuff as I do, get on some charts, mark up some things. Even if you're not a student of mine, send me an email at Corey at CoreFXTrading.com. That's C-O-R-E-Y at CoreFXTrading.com. Find my website below and you can get on there and shoot me over an email. I'll give you some feedback on your charts. I love checking out charts. I love marking up charts. Get your practice and train your eyes. When you look at a chart one day, you're going to be able to quickly identify where these levels are without even having to think very hard about it. That comes from practice. Thank you guys. I really appreciate all your support. I hope you like these videos. Check out more videos below. Follow me. Subscribe to my page. You'll turn on your notifications. You'll get every video I release. I'm going to be releasing all kinds of free content. So again, my Forex fiends out there, thank you very much for the support, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. I'll catch you in the next one.